Hey everyone, my name is Jake. I used to work at Microsoft and now I'm trying to build my own startup. So last week I announced that one of my co-founders is actually leaving and my other co-founders are taking a break. And so I'm going to be a solo founder for now. If you want to follow along my week by week updates, subscribe. So I've been trying to use a no code tool called Framer to build my landing page. And I think I'm going to move on to just coding my own landing page. It's not that I don't find value in it, but I think since I know how to code, I think it's just going to be a lot easier if I code up the landing page myself. Just seeing an example, I was just playing around with the landing page, just trying to create the hero section and really, you know, I'm running into issues where, random issues using this tool where, for example, the, the text just gets cut off. And so a lot of these uh, issues that I'm running into, I feel like I can just fix faster if I were to code it myself, rather than having to rely on the no-code tool. And that's why I'm pretty much gonna get rid of it. I understand that there's definitely a need for people who are non-technical and need something up faster and don't have the time to learn how to code. And there's definitely a use case for that. But for me personally, I don't think it's worth it. Real quick, I'm not sponsored, but I feel like the Costco coffees, if you need a kick to your day, and need to be productive. I feel like these things are really great because they have so much caffeine in them. And honestly, they'll keep you going for a few hours at the very least. But that's my side tangent. <laughs> Here's the video. Since I've been working on coding my own landing page, I've tried to create a general template to add to the MVP template code. So with things like your company logo, login flow, and generic sections that most landing pages have. The code is going to be similar to the front end MVP template so that there is a smaller learning curve when working with both and the components directory will contain the initial set of common components that most landing pages have. And as time goes on, I will try to add more and more components. So as you see, we have the hero section followed by the features and the testimonials in my local UI. Now the components are designed to be as swappable as possible, meaning in the app.tx tsx file you should be able to just input sections you want and customize them as you needed i've also added a readme with resources that i've been using to structure and build my landing page and what goes into each component so feel free to work off of that as well of course there's no one size fits all but hopefully this saves you time when you're building landing page aside it's going to be a couple of weeks of coding to try get my mvp out so i'm probably going to do some sort of private beta where i iron out all the initial bugs and kinks and get a solid first feature out before going to a wider public beta. In the meantime, I, I do want to talk about some of the pros and cons of being a solo founder that I've faced in the past couple of weeks. And if you're thinking about going solo, one of the major benefits that I've found is that I have complete control over all the processes and that I'm able to move at whatever speed I want to. I'm able to define the features and the direction that I'm going to take, and I'm essentially the business. Unfortunately, sometimes I might be going in the wrong direction and I might not know it, I might not have a, another co-founder to lean on and tell me that what I'm doing is wrong. And I really have to just figure out a lot of this for myself. I can talk to other people, but ultimately it's on me. It's also super hard to do everything myself. Sometimes I don't want to reach out to users and get feedback. Sometimes I don't want to code. Sometimes I feel like I'm context switching a bunch, which could lead to decreased productivity. I do feel like sometimes I'm not moving as fast because I don't have as much time to code and maybe I'm just prioritizing the wrong things. You know, should I be getting more users? Should I be coding? Should I be trying to do both? But regardless, I think it is good for me now just because I'm figuring all this stuff out and which parts about running a business I like the most because I do think eventually I would want at least one co-founder because it, I do think it's going to be beneficial in the long term to have somebody sharing this load and also have somebody that complements my skill set. Another point I want to talk about is someone actually asked me about my business plan in a previous video. And honestly, my biggest focus right now is user validation and really nailing down an MVP that solves an important problem. So the YouTube tool is, is a highish level idea and I'm trying to talk to people to learn about their exact pain points, understanding how often a problem bothers them, have they looked for other solutions and what features would solve that. And as a developer, I, I really am just trying to avoid building something out and hoping someone uses it even though I do have the power to just keep cranking out MVPs and hoping that people pick up on it. But ultimately, I feel like an idea should have a strong vision for the future and how it can scale up. 
So for example, if I were to make a startup that was an AI agent that dealt with incident response, my larger vision might be an end-to-end -end incident response management platform. I do have vague visions for the YouTube tool and I'm not really sure where it's going to end up in the long term because it really depends on how the MVP turns out and how it evolves over time. And really things like pricing aren't on top of mind because I'm just trying to emphasize the user's pain points and try to gain traction. In terms of technical progress, I have faced one major annoying problem and that is working with the YouTube API. There is a pretty strict quota of 10,000 units a day and how they measure API requests is in units. The search feature, for example, uses up 100 units per query. So I'm really limited to 100 searches per day in total. How I'm going to solve that, I have no idea. Maybe YouTube will give me a higher quota, but if not, then I'll probably have to do some janky solution where I'm interacting with the UI itself. Otherwise, everything else is really just chugging away at the coding. So I imagine I'll uncover a lot more problems along the way. Thanks for watching. And if you want to follow along my journey, don't forget to subscribe.